My name is Michelle Moore and I'm your leadership coach. And these are my five leadership tips to level up. Michelle Moore, level up, tip number one. Lead with your values. The first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. And to do that, you have to define your values. As academic and activist Angela Davis tells us to become more leaderful in all we do, we need to know what we stand for. Our values help us to know that. They help describe the things that are important to us and what it is that we want to use in our leadership style. They help carve out a future vision for the kind of leader we want to be. Our value set also enable us to make tough decisions and they keep us centered in our integrity. They demonstrate our leadership behaviors and our decisions more than anything else. Being transparent in your values helps to influence your decisions as a leader and your behaviours. Your values are intrinsically linked to your identity. When in situations where your values are not upheld by others or the organisation you're working with, your values enable you to use your agency to step into your power and hold them to account and articulate your position. And that enables you to use your value set in a really practical way. Your values then are a foundational and integral part of your leadership journey. Prioritise self-compassion. Self-compassion is the skill of talking to and relating to yourself as you would a good friend. It is an important element of leadership because it is about showing empathy and compassion for oneself and therefore enables you to show compassion for others. So ask yourself, and you can ask yourself now, how kind are you to yourself? Are you kinder to others than you are yourself? If so, you need to increase your levels of self-compassion. Self-compassion is quietening that inner voice, which is often an inner critic. It is freeing yourself from self-judgment in order to cultivate emotional well-being. Instead of falling into patterns of self-criticism, it's about reframing it to tell yourself that you're doing the best that you can with the resources that you've got. Self-compassion helps us to adjust our own expectations of ourselves and others, and it helps us to find another way. Self-compassion builds resilience, and most of all, it builds empathy for others. And it is a first. It is a must and a first for you to do before you can actually show compassion for everybody else that you are working with or you are leading or influencing in some way. Role modeling self-compassion is really important because what it does is it shows those people that you lead and influence that you take it seriously. They then show self-compassion for themselves and the others in which who they influence. Self-compassion is about releasing yourself from self-judgment. It enables you to move on from failure more quickly. Often it can we can find a way to move away from fear, away from those feelings that cause us anxiety, and self-compassion enables us to be kinder to ourselves because of that. Cultivate a growth mindset. Mastering a mindset for success as a leader is about developing a growth mindset, which creates a positive inner belief system. People with a growth mindset believe that their abilities are based on their effort and they're open to learning and tackling problems, as opposed to people with a fixed mindset who believe that their abilities are fixed, they avoid challenges and they lack confidence to adapt to new situations seeing the world through a narrow lens. Developing a growth mindset is about focusing on the process and not the outcome. By going one step further and releasing your attachment to the outcome, this creates greater freedom for you to strive for your personal best. What that does is that enables you to work in a way that is not so pressurized and more 
focused on your perseverance, your skills and your talents to get the desired results. Often it's like being on the sports field as a sportswoman, it's about separating out motivation and pressure. Cultivating a growth mindset for success and to be the best leader you can is about the constant journey of learning, of working hard, of unraveling, and also uncovering those hidden talents in yourself and in others. Understanding failure. Understanding failure is a key part of leadership. We all fail at times in our lives, both in our professional and our personal lives. There is a danger though, and a real risk that we can define ourselves by that failure. So it's an important element to understand that when it shows up, we mustn't avoid it, and we mustn't avoid the feelings that go with it as well. Acceptance is the deal breaker. It's not about expecting that failure will happen. It's more about developing the mindset that understands that that failure or resistance is a part of the journey to success. It will always make a guest appearance. It may be a major part or it might be a minor part. Our reality and our choice is to be able to learn from those mistakes as the powerful lessons that they are, that they will enable us to better understand the failure or the mistake and to move through it the next time it comes. The fear which often comes from failure can motivate us to change direction and find another way. This is about actually asking yourself different sets of questions, more reaffirming questions like, what is this trying to teach me? What's the lesson here? As opposed to why me and why now? And even what should I do? Failure then becomes these powerful lessons in developing your self-efficacy, which in turn enables you to overcome future challenges. My biggest failures, both on the track as a sportswoman, on the netball court, and my failures at work in my professional life as a manager and as a leader, have all led me to the position that I'm in today. Michelle, level up, tip number five. Build your resilience. Resilience is your ability to recover from setbacks, from trauma, and from adversity and to bounce back and live life fully. Resilient leaders understand that they're able to withhold and sustain their energy levels under pressure. They do this because they have an innate sense of strength and resilience to build upon. Resilient leaders are able to adapt to changing circumstances and they're able to cope with adversity and they're able to bounce back and also bounce forward. Self-leadership, maintaining a positive outlook, your connection to others and your sense of agency are the key tenets of developing a resilient mindset. Nelson Mandela is the ultimate example of resilience. Confined to Robin Island, sentenced to a life imprisoned, with his fellows, he decided to take up ballroom dancing, true story, to increase his morale and to improve all of their health. Even with the smallest amount of power, he decided to use his own agency to have an impact on his life. That then increased his resilience levels. Resilience is like a kit bag of equipment that you can pull out when you need to, especially during times of challenge. The thing about your kit bag though, it has to be completely replenished at regular times. Otherwise, it, you're susceptible of running out of kit. As in life, if you are unable to draw on your reserves when you need them the most, the consequences are negatively impacted on your performance and your emotional and mental health. Self-care is a component part of resilience and is critically important for all of us, but especially for us who are black. As a black woman, 
Poet and activist Audre Lorde reminds me of this when she talks about self-care as self-preservation, as survival in a white supremacist society. Self-care includes all of those tools and techniques that make you feel more of yourself in the world, from practicing joy, to journaling, to talking out to your vulnerabilities with the, your support crew, to celebrating your big wins in life. Self-care is critically important in building your resilient reserves. These kinds of self-care tools and techniques over time build your resilience. They help you bounce back from setbacks. They enable you to develop your emotional health and well-being. They create an elasticity of hope that enables you to be more of yourself in the world. They increase your self-awareness and all leadership starts and ends with self-awareness.